budget, 25 million is the school department. The council has little control over the 25 million dollars. The council is really looking at the 15 million dollars in the budget. But even if it's 15, the town is growing, there are 12,000 people. The town council works, you have, you have jobs. You can't look at all the day-to-day -day issues. You need someone to work with during the day to solve a lot of these issues. We can't solve issues waiting for a town council meeting twice a month. We have to take action, we've got to do things, we've got to keep this budget rolling. It, it's a difficult job. I, I, I don't expect the council with a full-time job to get heavily involved in day-to-day -day operations. You just can't. You'll get fired from your job. We need someone with professional skills to do the day-to-day. -day. It's important. It's done in 22 other cities and towns in Rhode Island. It's a democratic process. The voters are electing the council. We're not, you know, it's, it's, it's not a free-for-all. We're not appointing the council. It's the public that's electing the council. If everyone was concerned about the manager, this building would be full of people, but it's not. We have town council meetings with very few residents. It's, it's the voters that don't seem to be so concerned about how we operate, yet it's a, a few group of people, whether it's the volunteers that are on boards and commissions. They need help day to day. You know, I'm, I have been involved in a lot of boards and commissions. There's a lot of things we want to do, but we can't. We can't wait twice a month for a town meeting to resolve these issues. If we had a town manager, we could move forward a lot quicker. And that's true for a lot of boards and commissions. And I welcome the public to look at what's happening in Boroughville. If you look at what, how the town of Boroughville is run with the town manager, Michael Wood, we, I had an opportunity to talk to Michael Wood. And I was impressed. And I'd say, I'd love to get a Michael Wood to come into North Smithfield. It, it's a complete different picture. And maybe the, the, the people in the audience, have they had an opportunity to talk to a town manager, to see how efficient it runs, talk to Michael Wood. I think, you know, I also agree with Paul Soares. Uh, even though it's a three to two vote for the town manager, I'd like to change my position and say, maybe we should have a super majority, a four to one vote or a unanimous vote. I think we should move in that direction. The feedback from the audience says we should have consensus on the council, so maybe it should be four to one. I also have a question about the, the, the bottom of the first page in, in section 1D, where you have to renew the contract. I think some people are a little bit confused about the renewal of the contract, that it's like a term limit. I think we should probably change the language a little bit, that uh, the renewal you know, can be three years, but you can if that town manager is doing a good job, he can go back for another renewal. I'm not sure if the language, the way it's written, if it's written correctly, maybe it should be changed so that if you have a town manager, you, elect, you give him a three-year contract. If he's good, you give, another, give him or her another three-year renewal. And then if they go for another term, it's another three years. But I'm not sure if the language is correct at the bottom of the page. The, uh, the other question I had was, on the second page, was in section three, acting town manager. I always felt that the finance department, the finance director, is probably a key player in the town. To take some of that confusion out of that, that section, I would like to see that if the town acting town manager would be the finance director or a qualified town employee. I think if you need to get someone quickly to fill in for town manager, I think it should be the finance director. It's a very critical post in the town. I think it would remove a lot of the confusion uh, that's in there about finding uh, an appointed uh, qualified employee. But I think we should go through these some of these sections and, and make some changes so that the public can understand some of the changes that we should be making to this document why they still here in the audience, which we haven't had a chance to do tonight. So if there's some time, maybe we should start looking at some of these sections and listen to what they're saying and make some changes. Thank you. Hi, me, Mr. President. Yeah. Mr. Rapko, thank you. Uh, some of the things that I've been thinking about, they may have merit, they may not have merit. But suppose uh, if we had an election and if we went to uh, the town manager, what would happen if we did not get qualified candidates? What would happen if there was a, a sh not a show of qualified candidates? So 
I don't know, that's the type of language we have to address. Who would be running the town if we did not appoint a town manager? So that's something we have to look at uh, as we start speaking this language out. And it looks like workshops are inevitable. We certainly should have a workshop on this with public inputs. So everybody can weigh in. That's about it for now. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening. I'm John Flaherty, 10 Green Street, Slatersville. Um, I did speak two weeks ago, so I'm not going to reiterate everything that I said then, but I would like to um, react to some of what I've heard tonight. Um, I think that what we're hearing tonight is, is, is fantastic. I don't agree with a lot of the perspective, but I think that it's good that this town's having this debate. Um, toward that end, I would like to see the public hearing process continue, because if it does go forward, I think there's going to still need to be a lot of vetting, and I really want to see the public input process end tonight. That's, that's one thing. Um, secondly, I do agree with uh, what Mr. Soar said, and I think that having a, uh, a supermajority um, approve hiring of the town manager um, would be appropriate for all the reasons discussed. Um, I came to my conclusion about where I stand on this issue from um, sitting on, on that bench and uh, getting an up-close and personal um, perspective into how town government works, how much more complex it's become, and that's what's shaped my opinion about it. Um, but having said that, I don't think that this is a, this is not a panacea, it's not a case where if we go this route, we're going to be in terrific shape, but if we go this route, we're going to be in awful shape. Um, I do think, though, that uh, everything else being equal and taking everything into consideration, it's in the town's interest to have a town manager hired. Um, we have heard a lot about democracy tonight, um, and I am a firm believer in democracy. Um, the fact that we don't have more people here concerns me. But that's a choice that people make. Um, the business of the town goes on 12 months a year um, and goes on every year. And decisions need to be made. And likewise, for this, for this position, I think one of the reasons um, that you're considering the presidential primary is so that if the voters did choose to, um, to go the, the manager route, that you'd be able to start that. And, in December of 2016, versus, you know, if it's if people know that it's going to be coming on the fall election, then that may discourage otherwise qualified candidates to come out and run to be town administrator for a two-year term, thinking that well, we're not sure what people are going to decide. We know it's coming um, in uh, in, the, in the next general election, but but it might discourage people saying, I don't know if I want to if I want to give up a job to run for uh, for town administrator. And then there's a chance that it's going to, it's going to be um, voted in favor of town manager. Final point I want to make is there's been a lot of discussion about uh, voter turnout, and it really uh, it really rubs me the wrong way because that is democracy. People have the opportunity, and in fact the obligation, to show up and vote in an election. We're not asking people to come out and vote every month or vote every six months. It's not, that, it's not that often that people have the opportunity to vote. And so if, I, I don't, personally, I'll, I'll just lay it on the line, I don't have a lot of sympathy for people who choose not to show up to vote and then complain later that the wrong decision was made. So I don't think that that's a reason to, uh, to postpone um, doing the town's business. That's, that's my opinion. Final point is um, one other amendment that you might consider, and I've printed up a, a description of it, some of the communities that do have um, higher town managers have a provision in the, uh, the charter to um, when, for example, when you reorganize every year, you elect the president. And, and when you do that, you could also, following the lead of some other communities, um, have that position also go by the, the title of mayor. It's an honorary title, um, but that is the person who is the, um, perceived as the top elected official in the community ceremonial purposes and otherwise, and that might be something that um, that'd be worth considering, and I'd, I'll be happy to provide this to you if, you, if you're interested. So,
Christmas is coming. Next Would you like to speak next? Council, my name is Beth Pharisee, 802 Poundville Road. Uh, like Mr. Flaherty, I spoke last time, so I'm not going to reiterate everything that I, I said at that time. Uh, again, I applaud all those who came up here and spoke, because it certainly takes guts to stand up in front of an audience and knowing that the camera is on to be able to express your opinion. That is democracy in action. We can't have it any more pure than that. Uh, having said that, though, I still will make the case that I do believe an appointed town manager would be in the town's best interest in the 21st century with the complexity of the job, with the complexity of contracts that have to be reviewed, negotiations, budget presentation, understanding bond issues, understanding all of the things that I know by now Mrs. Hamilton has learned on the job, as I had learned as an elected official probably about a year after I had become the elected town manager, or the elected town administrator, and that I was able to take that knowledge that I had acquired the two years here and bring it into the town of West Bridgewater in order to work with that council, or as they call them, the selectmen, for 21 years. I had three, I had seven three-year contracts with them. And I only left there because I retired. And I felt that at that point in time, I'd given my life to the town of West Bridgewater after having served the town of North Smithfield. And that now here I am back again with your good graces. I'm now on the budget committee. Well, that's all well and good. And I'm not speaking as a member of the budget committee at this point in time. I'm speaking as a resident of the town that I think with the continuity you would have with an appointed town manager and with the professionalism you would acquire that the democracy has played itself out by bringing this matter in front of the voters. And what I'm asking for you to do is to consider sincerely putting it on a ballot question for the voters to decide whether they want to do this or not. When I was elected administrator, many of you may recall, that was the year the town voters did away with the annual town meeting. There are those who felt a piece of history was lost without a town meeting. I haven't heard too many human outcries to restore the town meeting form of government in North Smithfield. The council has taken on the job of finalizing the budget. So I, I, I say again, that I think this type of change would be good for the community, and I just ask that you consider putting it on as soon as you can. I do support some of the changes that have been brought up tonight, and I think this is the vetting that those of us who helped put this change together were looking for to get other, other opinions, other ideas as to the best way to promote this to make it the most appealing to the majority of the voters. Thank you. Mike Clifford, 489 White Plain Road. I think before anybody wastes any more time or energy on worrying about this and deliberating as to whether it should be on the April ballot or the November ballot, I, I think somebody needs to take the lead here and um, check with the, the timeline to see if it is even possible to get it on the ballot for April. Because you've got to get General Assembly approval. You have to have, last time when this went on the ballot in 2010, after the Charter Commission made their recommendations, the entire document went to the solicitor, who then made every other change that needed to be made. Wherever it said town administrator, was stricken and it said town manager. Wherever the appointments were taken, it was all done. And you have to have that document in front of you, which is what we were told in 2010. The council has to have that document completely edited in front of you at the time that you take a vote to put it on the ballot and send the resolution to the General Assembly to approve it. So if you back in from April, I'm, I'm sitting here tonight and I'm saying, I don't even know how you're going to get it on the ballot for April. Because you've got to, you've got to, there's a lot of work left to be done in editing it and getting it in the proper format for you to even vote on a resolution to send it to the General Assembly to get permission to put it on the ballot. 
And, and then the time frame of getting it into the Secretary of State, I, I don't know what, when that's going to be into the Secretary of State, have something on the ballot for the April election. I know that, you know, the, in a regular general election, the primary period is a certain time, and you've got to get things in. Deb might know better than most of us how much far in advance you have to get the thing in. But I don't even know if it's doable for 2018. So I'd just like to suggest that between now and your next council meeting, maybe you could charge somebody, the solicitor or the town administrator or somebody, to actually come up with a timeline and see if this is even doable. And as I'm sitting here and as I've listened and as I've read the comments in the paper and everything, I happen to believe in this position and I happen to believe that this change would be good. I think in retrospect I'm looking at this and I'm hearing some comments that suggest to me that maybe too much change too fast isn't good because people need time to adjust to the change that just occurred. Mrs. Farris, he just did a good analogy when we did away with the town financial meeting. That was a big controversial to do at the time. And She's right. Nobody's been clamoring to get the town financial meeting back. At the time, there were a lot of people who were very upset with it. And I think you just need to have some time for people to settle into the changes. We did just change the language in the, um, in the town charter for the school committee appointments. I think those who voted for it are probably pleased with the, what they've seen so far. I think those who voted against it were against it from the get-go, and they're still against it. But I, maybe with time, they'll see that it had a positive effect. But I, I think at this point, I'm like, you know, I'm a very strong advocate for this position. But at this point, I'm like, maybe this isn't even the right time to do this. And maybe this isn't even possible to do. And I, I, I pick up on what Mr. Flaherty said. I think that was a concern of mine when, we, when, when it was being discussed that you put it on the ballot for 2016. If it, I, I, if it went on the ballot for 2016, I would be afraid that it would dissuade some people from running for town administrator when that ballot, when that question was on the ballot at the same time. And 2016 to 18, in my mind, is a very critical time for this town financially. And that's when, you know, the 2016 election is the time that you should have the most people running for this office if we're going to continue it. And if it's on the ballot at the same time, it could dissuade people from running for the town administrator's position at a point where you really, really need someone. So, you know, it's a dilemma. It's a catch-22. You can never please anybody. I mean, everybody's always going to find fault with if you do it in a presidential primary, if you do it in the general election. There's no pleasing everybody. I, I totally agree with what Mr. Um, Flaherty said. Um, voter apathy is not something to be proud of, it's something to be ashamed of, but it's a fact. Nobody is being prevented from coming to a presidential primary. And let's stop and reflect in a minute. We're talking about going out to vote in a primary for who is going to lead this country. In my mind, that's the most important, one of the most important elections in the country. So if you don't have enough interest to go out and vote in a presidential primary to try to make sure that someone confident gets into that job, I don't have a lot of empathy for the guy who chooses to stay home. I really don't. I mean, you know, you, 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 it's, it was made, comment was made at the last meeting too. There's absentee ballots. You don't even have to be out of town to get an absentee ballot now. How many conveniences we have to make it easy for people to vote? And they still choose not to vote. But the mindset that you're denying people the right to vote in a presidential primary, I don't buy that at all. I don't buy it at all. But I don't know, truthfully, sitting here listening to it, thinking of the list of things that was done last time before it got on the ballot, whether you actually have enough time left to do this and get it on the ballot with, in the right way. So I think that's where you need to start maybe next, is charging someone with that responsibility to come up with a timeline and see when you, what the target dates are, if it's even possible, because it might not be possible at all for the primary. So we don't need to waste time talking quick anymore. We can you know, move on and then you can decide, okay, is it going to be 2016? Is it going to be never? Is it going to be 2018? You know, maybe, maybe 2018 is a great year because the artificial income that we've had from National Grid and Dowling Village is gone. People will be getting real tax bills and maybe it'll make them be more attentive. I don't know. I'm, I'm also, can I just say one more thing? I'm really tired of the conspiracy theory. There's no conspiracy theory here. You know, it's goodwill is what people are trying to promote. It's positive change. It's things that are good for the town. And if you have to label somebody who promotes that, you know, backdoor, non-transparent, I mean, I, I don't know how people can be more transparent than we've been, but.
You got this. So I just wanted to get that off my chest. Tony, I'm sorry. No problem. Um, like last meeting, you agreed with me. Yeah. I'm going to agree with you this week. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> well, we usually uh, agree. <laughs> no, I, I, I agree. Um, you know, one thing I will disagree with you on is you said we can wait. Um, what, what I've seen is we're back in the same situation of the timeline, right, where we were concerned about forget about April. Now, if you recall, what was it back in? Back in March of last year, I believe it was when we discussed when the council was discussing when my election would be. Um, when it came, they wanted to put charter amendments on that, and and the council was going back and forth. It was the town manager. It was also appointment of a council member in lieu of a death, um, or in, in event of a death, I should say. And all of a sudden, the timeline became a factor there as well. So. Where I'll disagree with you slightly on this is where you said we can stop talking about it and wait. No, we can't because we keep getting these time crunches and then we miss election deadline. I mean, you can talk, you can stop talking about putting it in on April. Right, right. I, I personally think the, the more discussion we have going forward, whether it's one meeting a month or one meeting every three meetings or whatever, to get public involvement, to me, if we're going to look at November, if we're going to look at it 2018, I think the more involvement, the better. I don't want to let it sit and wait, and then we come down to another time crunch. That's my only concern. I do agree with you that you know we got to start looking at is it even feasible to do it first off, and then second off, if it's not, we can't just let it sit. We got to we got to keep discussing and talking about making this document a better document, more ironclad, and that way what goes before the voters is acceptable to all should they choose to enact it. I do agree with something Mrs. Nino said too. I think it does stand a better chance in a general election passage because what you said is absolutely accurate. The statistics show that more, pe more people will go out of their way to vote a negative. I mean, I, if, I, if I'm mad about something, I'm going to kill myself to get there to vote against it. But I'm, if I'm you know, indifferent, I'm not going to go out of my way. So I think, I, I think it has a better chance to pass in a general election. And I, I'm also, I, I always hear this is the third time, this would be the second time. This would be the third time. This would be the third time. I can only remember one other time, 2010. And the process. The process point. No, no. How many times did it go before the voters? Once, 2010. Yep. And the language was defective. It didn't have an effective date. Which brings me to another thing that you still have to do. It has to have an effective date. And there's two theories on the effective date. And that, that in itself is a monumental task for you to work out. Because the effective date is going to be the entire charter change goes into effect on December 1st at the end of the current terms, in which case you could find yourselves for two to three months with no town administrator. Or you could put an effective date of the appointment after December 1st with the new town council making the appointment, but you could trigger with certain language drawn up by the solicitor that the screening committee and solicitation of, um, of, of resumes could begin in the summer. So that when the new council was seated, they would have on the first day in front of them a stack of resumes for consideration. And Paul, what you said about the, um, the, the, the comment that you made about what happens if we can't find someone who meets all the criteria and qualifications, I was kind of choking when people were mimicking or, or mocking the, the degree of, of the, um, the qualifications that the person has to have. Because if you check through the other charters and other communities, <coughs> It's ten times weaker than this. It was an embarrassment to read some of them because, like, you had to, you know, be able to breathe and walk and chew gum, and you could do it, you know. And and I was looking at this, thinking, what Paul said out loud, boy, you know, what happens if we can't find someone with all of those credentials? And because I think it could be possible that you might not find someone with all those <coughs> credentials. So, you know, but but even the um, the effective date, working out the details of the effective date and how the transition would take place. That's a lot of work and a lot of hours, too. So, I think I'm throwing in the time. <laughs> if I may, Mr. President, and, and to follow up on that, you know, it's a three-year contract with a possibility of renewing it. We're casting a broad net, a wide net, to bring in as many applicants as possible. If we don't get one, then we're in trouble. Uh, I have to tell you, I know necessity drives someone to, to move forward. But could you imagine someone looking at this upstate New York, upstate Massachusetts, say in three years, uh, my kids are in school, do I relocate them to a new community? There's continuity here. I mean, this is challenging for anybody that's going to consider being a candidate. 
So do they, do they take that risk to come for three years, hoping they get another three years so the kids go through a school system and graduate with their friends? I mean, this, this is, could be disruptive to a town manager's personal well, life itself. If they've got confidence in their skill set, I'd say yes, they take the chance to come down. Yeah. If they don't have confidence, let's hope they don't apply. Good answer. Thanks, Mike. <laughs> Was <laughs> <laughs> that two town Flaherty? <laughs> Is there anyone else like to speak on, on the topic? Hearing none. What are we doing? Are we going to continue this? Or are we going to I continue the public hearing? I continue the public hearing. The motion to continue the public hearing until? I, I don't know. Uh, first of all, before we close, up, can, can we ask that uh, there was a good point about timelines? I, I, uh, David, I'm looking at you. I'm going to make a, a motion that uh, the town council ask you to follow up the timelines with the Secretary of State to see if it's even feasible for the primary. Uh, also to incorporate in that motion is that we look at the, the wording on here. I'll make a separate motion for that. So let's let's just ask if uh, I make a motion we ask the town solicitor to uh, research the timeline with the Secretary of State to see if this can indeed make the ballot. But we need to straighten up the language too. So in general assembly. General assembly, yeah. So that's a motion. I guess the solicitor to do that. Okay, motion by Councilman Sewinsky, <coughs> second by Councilman Sewell. Is there any further discussion? Hearing that, Madam Clerk, roll call vote, please. Yes. Mr. Nato? Yes. Mr. Sewell? Yes. Mr. Sewell? Yes. Mr. Boucher? Yes. Now that brings us to the language. May I make a suggestion? Please. I mean, Mr. President, I really think what needs to be done is a uh, total package should be presented and people with amendments should, you should make it, people need to provide you a written amendment that you can have a list. It shouldn't be my version. Of it. At the end of the day, if somebody's got an amendment, they should be presenting it to the council or a council member has an amendment, presenting them, I make this amendment, up or down. You vote amendments as they present it. That's the way it's, it's always done. Uh, so you have the main the main document, and then council people, if anybody else can propose, but you put, require them to be in writing, in writing, so that you can you can vote on them. Okay. And then, so you might have thirty amendments pending. I mean, some of the amendments that have been made today, uh, some housekeeping amendments, you know, that that would be taken up in the original document. But there's been you know amendments about can I, can I ask for vote versus an empty can... vote. Sorry, job we vote versus so, 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 vote. There's too many sidebars going out there, all I'm hearing is mumbling. I just that. give you one example, the, the example of the super majority vote. That would be an amendment that somebody would make. It, it's not something just I would just throw into the document of my own volition. The council would have to vote that they want that language in. Does that make sense? And then you have to debate the merits of that, because once you get into either a super majority vote, you result uh, Please may have one, please. A stalemate. So, when, as town council makes amendments, I, I don't want it to be looked at as tacit accepted of, of this going forward. It's just to, to make this language as uh, professional as possible. Because if I come in with an amendment, I don't want anybody to think that I'm accepting this as tacit. Okay. So, what are we doing? My, my recommendation is to continue to another public hearing for all written amendments to be submitted. A clean, a clean document with any of amendments, and anybody who wants to propose amendments should submit them. Okay. And then you can even do that if that if you don't get them all at the next meeting, provided we have time, you can do another meeting. Well, provided we have time for the primary. You see, this is the catch. The primary has to be, that has to be squared away first. So if we're going to start coming over with amendments, how much time do we have before we go to General Assembly? Yeah, certainly we'll get the timeline and I'll, I'll generate that, but I would think that you'd want to put it down for the next council meeting for continuation of the public hearing. Well, we're gonna work, well, we're gonna have a workshop to try to, to try to go through this. I, I really, again, it's up to the council, but I really think that the, the, the council should just have a public hearing at, as you go along on this. Because a good, a good idea may come out of the public that you may want to have. I, I mean, Regardless of whether you ultimately vote to put it on the ballot or not, the final document that you have for consideration will be in the best form that you have. I, I like the idea of written amendments coming forward. 
but quite honestly, this is such a change to the governance of the town of North Smithfield. I think it should be a public where people can come in and make amendments at that during the work session or workshop. But the date is important because, again, looking for the primary. I'll get the dates. I'll get the dates. Right. I mean, I've already done preliminarily. Uh, the statute says, you know, 59 days before the primary. I mean, right. So that's the statute. But, you know, as a practical matter, we were shooting for February 1st as the determining factor. But, you know, I'll get the hard line. I mean, the statute is pretty clear. It says 59 days. The Secretary of State can't reject it if we meet the statute. So if we start up a little public hearing, a public workshop, what date would be, uh, what date could we make it? That's the question. I, I have no problem with special meeting. Whatever night it would be. You say just do it at a meeting? That's, I, 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 don't, every meeting. I, I can't see why you couldn't include it in every meeting then if you, if you, you know, if you can't get to, to the entire thing. You're not going to get it all done in one meeting. Okay. I don't think you. Just like tonight, you've got some great ideas, and sure I did want to try to adopt you do so with some great reforms. And then ultimately, you might decide that you're going to have one final meeting. But I mean, it's, it's an important issue that I think the council should consider. I, I would think you'd want it on next, the next meeting. And let's see what the next, the, the next document, the next iteration of the document looks like. We've heard some comments tonight that the councilman uh, they don't indicate there's, a, there's a, a complete form that floating around. I think I saw that in March, right? Yep. Uh, how's, yeah. how's, how's January 12th look? It's fine. Fine? Yeah, okay. Make a motion that we can do this to January 4th. Public Give hearing. us a timeline. Let's go. Chair second. Chair seconds that motion. Hearing none. Is there any further discussion? <laughs> now, take a couple of questions. Ms. Allen? Yes. 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 Mr. President, if I may. Mrs. Mrs. Gomes has arrived for that sound system. She's been sitting there for a while. I don't know if we could possibly take her now. Uh, see, ma'am, we made a motion to continue as one of the main uh, makers of the motion. I'll make the motion to reconsider Mrs. Gomes' uh, sound permit. Motion by Councilman Zawinski, second by Councilman Nato. Is there any further discussion? Hearing that, all in favor say aye. 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 The ayes have it. Okay, 
continue on. No, no, no. Uh, I, I was just saying, it being a Sunday on a holiday weekend, a holiday, yeah. I wouldn't have a problem going midnight with the noise from it. Yeah, it's, um, and, you know, I, I don't either, but it is, uh, just go, make sure you invite everybody to your party that lives next to you. That's <laughs> <cool>. <laughs> <laughs> the, the concern that I would have, and has always been voiced by councils for, for years and years and years, is traffic. Now, you're trying to address that by having uh, to a, the Rossmanfield School uh, Committee to allow you to park on their property. There's liability. I, you know, I just want you to know that. Without off-site parking, it's going to create, a, with 200, resident, uh, 200 family members and friends coming, it creates a traffic hazard, which the North Smithfield Police Department would have to come in and enforce. I would have no problem if you had off-site parking and you had designated shuttle drivers. Uh, the, the question would be the neighbors that are bought you with noise. I don't think you're going to have that. But we've always gone to 10 o'clock unless it was a church or a temple or a religious type function with. We knew that they had police presence on walking around the carnivals and things of that nature. So I don't have a problem doing it. Just make, if you can get in your way ahead of the curve, by the way. So if you can have uh, the school committee say they're all right with it, I'm okay with it. Do I need to have my neighbors sign anything stating they're okay with it as well? I you know, we'll take this risk. I don't, I don't think so. Uh, you know what? You get married. God bless you. Uh, <laughs> Hopefully it only happens once. <laughs> we we got to do what we have to do. I, I would have no problem supporting that. But I, I think 10 p.m. is a reasonable amount for a sound system. So if you wanted to start in the afternoon, I don't think anybody's, you know, if, if you say four instead of six, you pick up that time. I don't know how that weighs into your wedding plans and getting back or whatever. I don't know, but. I, you know, 10 o'clock is, is kind of like the bewitching hour for noise. Okay. Is that fair? That's fair. Okay, so let us know how you make out with the school uh, committee, and then uh, certainly I, I would have no problem supporting it, because then we'd alleviate traffic, parking, coming and going over there. Mr. Zelensky, just clarification, are you going back to 10 o'clock? Yes. Not midnight? Yes. Okay. I don't think we've ever granted a uh, past 10 o'clock <coughs> Social event that was not uh, regulated by uh, a church or a synagogue or a mosque or anything else. This did not police presence. BFW. BFW too. Thank you. I have a question. So, if there were police presence, it would be able to go to midnight? Kind of a bummer on the party, but yeah. <laughs> police presence at the party or at the No, party? You, don't, you don't need. What, what happened? The reason we give time extensions to party uh, to sound is that it attracts more people. But those events usually have a police presence of detail. Not, you don't need the detail at your wedding party. No, no. The, the, the issue here is traffic parking on that road. So if you can, if you can get the okay by the school committee, the park and the school uh, school property, wonderful. And I, I'm just a firm believer that this, as a council member, I would not support extending a sound permit past 10 p.m. Even if it was for my next door neighbor, and they invite me to the party, it's just it's too intrusive on everybody else. <coughs> 10 p.m. is long enough. Thank you. So, Thank you. do we need a plug? No, I guess we just have to hear back from the school. So she's going to have to get the, yeah. the, the information from the school department first, or we could do massive contingent contingent of our. Oh, yes. Question. Good. Do you have a backup plan if the school department says no? Uh, not yet. Not yet. I'm thinking of Brian's. I'm sorry, what's that? Brian University is on the other end, so I'm going to ask them next if uh, okay. So I, I would say we wait to see what the school department says because there isn't a secondary plan as of yet, um, as far as the parking goes. Um, which is the major concern. Which is the major, right, the major concern is the parking issue, right. So. If the school department says no, you have Bryant University, you have possibly the funeral home over there on the corner. What's that? Your, your neighborhood. <laughs> Unless you get permission from St. John's Church and you truck the people up from there. It's a long that's, that's, that's a long road. I know, but I mean it's... Yeah, we, we shouldn't suggest Alton. Let, 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 <laughs> let the applicant come up with it. Let you put Alton to Plan B. Thank you. All right, thank you. Are you continuing that with the table here? Uh, your advice, Melissa. I'm sorry, Mr. Okay. 
Well, what the applicant going to get back to you within a before the applicant leaves, uh, just go back to the next meeting. I don't think they understand the process. Yeah. They don't. I don't think the applicant understands that there's been no action taken. And you're waiting. For yes. Them. So I have to contact the school committee, get approval from them, and then come back to you. Is that correct? Yes, we can continue this until the uh, our next council meeting in January 4th. Or maybe doesn't meet until the middle of the So January 9th, what is it? That's the next school committee. I think they have a budget one on the 12th. Yeah. I think we have a budget one on the 12th, not they. All right, so by February, it should be before the school committee. Correct. So, and you'll have time to figure this out to get married in July. So we can do this. Contingent upon, yeah, the, the, the answer from the school committee. Because they control the property grounds. We, we don't. All right, so we'll continue this, uh, Madam Clerk. What's the date? February, the, the next council uh, meeting? Council meeting. First meeting in February is the first. January 19th. So I think Council Soli was 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 speaking about passing it contingent upon school committee approval and the sound limit at uh, until 10 p.m. Is that correct, Council Soli? Uh, that was. Not me, I had a question. Was it? Oh, I thought it was, was a secondary plan. I believe it was Council Tomato or Council Tomato. Yeah, oh, then okay, maybe I was hallucinating <laughs> again. So if, if, if there was uh, approval by the school committee, then we could continuously approve this that the parking is going to be contingent upon the approval by the school committee and your sound permit uh, is till 10 p.m. And this way you wouldn't have to come back to us. You would know a couple of weeks sooner so you can start making forward with your wedding plans. So I'll make a motion to pass this contingent upon approval by the school uh, committee to allow parking at a school property and with the town, uh, with the sound permit until 10 p.m. in the evening. Okay, Chair, seconds. I think we kind of solved. Okay, we're going to say hope. Roll call vote, please, Madam Clerk. Ms. Alice, yes. Ms. Nato, yes. Mr. Sosa, yes. Mr. Zolensky, yes. Mr. Boucher, yes. So, Ms. Nato, yes. Mr. Boucher, yes. Mr. Boucher, yes. So now you'll have to go to the school committee and let us know. Okay. How you make let us know how you make out, and uh, we're we'll continue this to. Need a motion to have the administrator approve a sound permit, and once this is, a, if it's approved, I, I'd like to make that motion that the administrator handle the sound off of the sound permit once those contingencies are met. Second. Okay, motion by Councilman Zawinski, second by Councilman Minato. Dealing with the sound permit uh, approved uh, by the uh, town administrator. Any further discussion? Hearing that, Madam Clerk, roll call vote, please. Just so you know, there is no sound permit. <laughs> well, what are we doing? Wait a second. There is no sound permit. nothing for Ms. Hamilton to sign off. I mean, we don't have a permit to give them. Okay. Then, so we just have a sign off. What, what, are you, what, am I, what am I hearing? No, there is no. I don't have a document for Ms. Hamilton. <coughs> so, contingent upon, we don't need Hamilton, uh, Administrator Hamilton. Thank you. Withdraw your motion. Withdraw. Second. Main motion withdrawn, and second withdrawn. Motion withdrawn, second withdrawn. Yeah. Okay. So I gotta wait to so, hear from the school committee. So the school committee and we can, either way we approved the we approved contingent, it. So contingent. So once you get that, you don't have to come back to us. But you so have I to just send it to town clerk. Or yeah. Yeah. Yes. Oh, good. Thank you. And you have contact with the school uh, school department, correct? Yes. Okay. Yes, I have. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Discussion by council board other action on school committee's plan for use of Mr. President, I believe that's the letter we received from the school committee stating they weren't ready to uh, discuss that yet. And uh, they'd be taken up at their next meeting in um, January. And, uh, what was it that I think? Yeah, January 19th. Yeah. 
So I guess there'd be a motion to uh, place this on the next docket. They won't have met by then. Pardon? They won't have met by then. No, no, I'm not. Well, so I'll have to put it in February. Yes, because you'll be in the same night that they will be in the So it'll be February 1st? Okay. Uh, motion is to place, uh, place this on the uh, February 1st uh, meeting. Second. Motion by the Chair, second by Council on the to do so. Is there any further discussion? Hearing that, Madam Clerk, roll call, roll please. Ms. Alves? Yes. Yes. So yes. Mr. Zolensky. Yes. Mr. Boucher. Yes. Zoning ordinance amendment, uh, section 5.7, ground mounted solar photo photo voltaic photo voltaic installations. Public hearing. Mr. President, I'd like to make a motion to continue as the uh, ad hoc committee is still working on other motions. We've gone over the. Uh, the use table is pretty much ready to be solidified at the last meeting of the ad hoc committee. Uh, it was voted on by the committee members to have uh, more of the members present before <coughs> this opinion was sent to town council. So in essence, uh, probably February 16th for town council meeting to continue this to. Okay, motion by uh, second. Councilman, uh, Councilman Zelensky, second by Councilwoman Nato. We'll move this to February 16th. Any further discussion? Hearing none, Madam Clerk, roll call, roll please. Ms. Alves? Yes. Mrs. Nagel? Yes. Mrs. Yes. Yes. Mr. Yes. Yes. All right. Thank you. Okay. Uh, discussion by Council Wood, other, other action on the consent agenda? I'd like to move to take B, C, D in its entirety and will withhold payment of bills. Is that correct, Councilman? Councilman? Uh, who said that? Oh, you, you want to do it. You want to always do it. Oh, oh, okay. All right. Sure. Is that your motion? It's my motion. Oh, so you're going to move A to. Uh, yes. Second. Move A to one. Okay, we'll take. Uh, so, motion by the chair to take B, C, D to prove it in its, its uh, entirety. Second by Councilman Zemitsky. Yes. Madam Clerk, roll call vote, please. Yes. 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 Okay. Now we'll take the payment of bills. Yes. Does anybody else has questions? Stop first. Okay. Um, um, Mr. President, I have one question, page one of two. Council Road E1 Pump. For the amount of $4,546. Page one of two. Okay. Oh, the sewer. The sewer. The sewer. At the end. At the end, sewer. Okay. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> it's the uh, E1 pump. FR Mahoney. FR Mahoney okay, for right. $4,546. And zero cents. Okay. Normally, I would have asked about this ahead of time, so I would have had an answer. But what prompted me to actually bring it up is one of the papers that we have on our desks. So, what was that for? It was for two pumps that were purchased. <clears throat> for residents? That answer I don't have with me today. Not I helpful, Jason. <laughs> I didn't know I was going to ask what, what um, user those were for. Right. And is sure. it, I could get it for you tomorrow morning. Is it part of one of the locations? Stage A, 1A? Yeah, yeah, I believe so, yes. yes. Well, we, we, can, we can just wait to pay it until we know what it's for. Right. For sure. Okay. You want to keep talking about this? Right. Uh, why we're on that page, uh, Madam Administrator, why we're on page one or two under sewer, we have expenditures to allot construction. Now I know that they, I, I know that they do work for the town. Does the town not have the expertise or the equipment to do this uh, manhole, like School Street? Does the town not have the ability to fix manholes? 
Is that why we go to Allard? We don't have the equipment, but we worked with them. You know, to do it, they did the excavation, you know, the large excavation, and then we did the rest of it, you know, actually doing the work around the manhole cover. Um, but no, we don't have the equipment. Okay. Yeah. And is there any way that you can consider paying the uh, that sewage, that E1, because we're going to be, every time this happens, we have a problem with, you know, our, our ability to maintain the integrity of how quickly we can turn around the bill, unless there's something major in question. I mean, we do keep some of them on hand also, very frequently when one of the E1 pumps <coughs> goes down, we replace, we take that one out, we replace it with one that we have in the shop, fix it, and then go back in. So I, I would say I'm 99% sure that that is the situation here. But, you know, I'm okay with that. Right. And the work was done, and that's it is what it is, right? Oh, yeah, and I mean, it's legitimate, and those prices are consistent with 1A and 1B. Yep, basically. I just wanted more information on it. Yeah, and that's there, the only sole source. Unfortunately, we can't get it any more penny less anywhere else because that farm Mahoney is it. They corner it. They do a great job. <laughs> Page uh, 1 of 15 in general. Uh -huh. uh, propane grill under Amazon. Yeah, I saw that. <laughs> that one circled. What was that? I saw that. that was purchased for the highway department. For what? So, so they for can cook ribs. Yeah. So what? For their use of highway department. I don't know. I'd have to yeah, defer well, what, to what, the... What, I'm not, no, I'm not. I'm I'll, just looking I'll tell you what it is. It's basically, it's been going on for a couple of years when they're plowing. And they have, instead of going home and getting hot meals or having meals brought uh, in, right. and everybody that's, tried. That's a good reason. They had used someone else's, one of the guys, for the last three years, and it was kind of getting, you know, he wanted it back, and it was getting a little old, and we said, you know what? It keeps you there, keeps you from being hungry. You can have camaraderie, get back on the road faster. We'll buy you one, and that's what we did. Yeah. Yeah. Page six of fifteen. Council, if we can stay on the same page, Mike. Oh. Go ahead. Yeah, you got some on that. Yeah. On, okay. While we're under that same Amazon uh, camera and equipment, I believe I'm looking at. Is that what that four hundred and twenty-three dollars and twenty-one cents? Correct. Yeah. Okay. And if we can move down to Anthony Catone, services rendered. I, sorry, which page? Page one of fifteen. Uh, I don't know, Mr. Catone, what services were rendered. He's an attorney for um, the sewer department to go over a variety of things. He was recommended and uh, vetted, and all his bills are vetted by the solicitor. Good. Thanks. Anything on page two? Uh, sorry, counsel. No, just one no worries. Yeah, right over there. Anything on page two of 15? Hearing none, was it uh, three of 15? Uh, yeah, quick. Uh, I see a stipend for Carl Johnson. I believe that's for Mr. Johnson uh, filming the YouTube, right? Is that right? Yeah. Thank you. And it, um, it is in arrears. Yes. So As opposed to based on the performance of them being up. Good. I'm glad we kind of corrected that. Thank you. I have a question on that. Um, so why would it not go through payroll since he's an employee? Um, it never has gone through payroll. So for this first run, we kept it consistent with what it was in the past. It should go through payroll. It should. Um, how many, I guess, how much has he been paid through a stipend, not through None. payroll? This None. is the first one. Yep. This is the first time it was processed through uh, accounts payable. So will he exceed $600? Or will it be any more after this? Not if this, not if this is the only one and we move over, which we planned at the first of the year to migrate over. This was to finish off the last of last year, or 2015, we'll call it. I have a question for the solicitor. Uh, the item on page 315 is that uh, is there a fee, a stipend, a fee for a cert training? Since I took the course and was received some of the product that was given for the you know, for this, do I have to recuse myself from this particular item? The cert training, I'm sorry. Training. I don't understand the training. Com community emergency. The regular was market for the 6049. That was like snacks that they gave us.
Do I have to recuse myself on this? No, are you the only council member who received this? No, no, I was the only one who was. He was a participant. I was a participant. I guess out of abundance of caution, you could not vote on that bill, I guess. Can I recuse myself on that particular item? I think have to sign a piece of paper, Madam Clerk. Purchase of this. That's why, that's why I asked. But if I have to sign it, I'll sign it. We're not going to finish up. We'll go to three. Speed this along. Are we uh, four or fifteen? Five or fifteen? Six or fifteen? All right, we're going for six or fifteen. Right. Title searches, Tiff Green, it says. So what's that? Three title searches. These. Montalbano, that's quite better to have. One was Kendall Dean was to determine the uh, the reverted clause. One was the which is green, which you see on there is Green Street because it was titled Green. Okay. Uh, Tiff, Old Tiff Road is the um, just to determine who has ownership of that path road, whatever it is that was you know, on our 1800 maps and it's still a discrepancy uh, or had been up until Mr. Um, <coughs> what is his name? John Bono uh, did the title search. The town actually does not own that so it's a piece road. of property. So it becomes a completely civil matter between the um, Holliston, the Kings, and uh, the Brookside question. <coughs> and the third was what? What was the other one you had a question on? It just says TIF, it says title searches, and then it just says TIF green. There was actually three title searches. One was stamina mills. That's it. And um, that one is, uh, they were all completed by Mr. Montalbano, but the reason we needed the stamina mills was to determine ownership because the EPA uh, is working with us on remediation and they wanted to make sure that they were dealing with the proper owner being the town and it seems that it's not us at this point so, so who owns the property we, it would still, Go for it would still be uh, mr conley sedona associates i'll get you copies of all those if you'd like them you can see the breakdown you said mr conley mr conley yes he's an attorney he usually takes uh, Ownership uh, by tax title, by you know, by tax um, sale, and then has, he has a number of them. He does some brownstone work and whatnot. But Sedona Estate, Sedona Associates. I'm sorry. Are we still on that page? Yes. On the uh, six of fifteen. Yes, on uh, six of fifteen. Uh, Mr. Casali Engineering, uh, 3,942, Oversight Drainage Water, where what? What's that for? Uh, for all of the engineering for the drainage and runoff for the new salt, salt, uh, salt shed Thank site. You. Right. Excuse me. Thanks. Okay, this one is Marco uh, and Sons stove pipe for wood stove. It's for the DPW. Stoves, grills, that's not a bad place to go. No, they've had that wood stove for a long time. The lighting project. 
Page 7 to 15. Nice. Page 8 to 15. Page 9 to 15. I have a question. Who's uh, Paul Valenti for 10,807? Paul Valenti is IT consultant for the police. He does IMC also. Yeah, well, the IMC, excuse me. 